I had to do it. I had to come back with this same demo setup and show you the next thing, multi-spectrum lighting. So, if you haven't seen it yet, check out our Lumitrax video where we show different angles of light. This is exactly the same setup. Same camera, same controller, same software, same light even. But this light is even more special than just being able to shine light from different angles. It also has different colors in it, including colors we can't even see. So it's got infrared, UV, and six other colors. We've still got this same stuff here, same blue card, blue packet, and two different plastic blue caps. And this is where the blue really becomes important. With my eyeball, I can tell you that these two caps are a very similar color of blue. I can tell the difference, but they're very similar. I can also tell you that there are some shades of blue, like the writing on this card, that are also very similar. And being able to differentiate that is very difficult for most vision applications. I wanna point out again, this is a monochrome camera. It's not a color camera. So by having different colors of light, we're actually able to get a color image from a monochrome camera. And I've talked about this before. Generally speaking, we go with monochrome because it's cheaper, it's higher accuracy, and it's the standard in industry. Color cameras do exist, but with our lighting tricks here and the software behind it, we can have a color picture without a color camera save money and again, better, better inspection precision when we're trying to measure something. I didn't even move things from where they were from the last video. Again, if you didn't see it, check it out, except that I changed this shutter speed to make the image better exposure. So I'm gonna show you when I change this over to multi-spectrum mode. Click on okay. And I'm gonna put my finger into the picture because right now it just looks like, okay, well, we see a bunch of blue, right? This is a black and white camera. I can't believe how good that picture looks. And we didn't have to do any setup. I just turned it on. I'm going to dive right into adding a tool. And there are a lot of color tools available. I'm just going to jump right over to one that I know I want to look at. And we'll let you explore the rest on your own. Color grouping. Often we want to be able to separate different colors of parts or determine if something matches the correct color. So that's what we're going to do right now. First I'm going to set the region of interest. You can kind of see it, it's this blue line on the blue background, so it's a little harder to see maybe in this case. Kind of okay. And again, if you know exactly where your part is going to be, the smaller you make this region of interest, the faster the inspection will be. I'm going to click on color group registration and I'm gonna add one here. Now remember, I said these two blues look very similar to my eyeball, and you can see they look very similar on the camera as well. So what happens if I click on one? This camera can tell the difference. It knows this blue is not the same as this blue, is not the same as this text blue, is not the same as any of the blue on this packet. I'm gonna click on OK and add another one and show you that it, it goes the other way too. This part is not the same color as that part. And it could tell this reliably. It's, it's searching that, that whole region of interest that we plugged in here. So if this Kian's text in the background or this packet, if anything had that same color, based on the multispectral inspection that we've done, it would be highlighted right now. Let's click OK on that. So now that we're done just playing around with the color selection like that, I'm going to cancel out of this because I don't really want that tool right now. What I want to show you is that we can see the different pictures that this took of all the different colors. So if I come back to set camera, I click on multi-spectrum settings. Look at all these tabs here. UV, blue, green, amber, red, another red, infrared, and white probably far red. I want to point out these uh, square dot patterns that we can see in this image, I can't even see them with my eyeball. Suppose that's not surprising, this is UV and people can't see UV with their eyeballs. Let's also look at infrared. 
Notice how different things look in infrared. And this isn't the perfect example, but notice this cap is brighter than that cap. And we'll see this often is true if we have different kinds of things, even a red and a blue part, they may show up as the same color in infrared, or, or they may show up as different. So to have this as a test bench, just to try different colors, is also very valuable. And I'll just click through the rest of the colors so you can see them. In UV, we kind of had some square dot pattern like this. In UV, I can see this printing. If I go to blue, I can't see that printing at all. I can still see the square dot patterns. In green, I can't see the square dots, but now I can see these shapes of the continents, as well as both of these bits of text. I'll just keep clicking through here, just so you can see the difference. I almost can't see anything in IR. So, um, I'm gonna back back out of this again, and I wanna show you one more thing. If we want to inspect this based on only a few colors instead of all eight. We can save a little bit of time by doing that. So go back into multi-spectrum settings and we'll click on options. Notice right now everything's checked. We can select lighting color and it'll even recommend a selection for us if we can tell it what we're looking for. So I can do this all manually or if I reselect that I want to show you, again, if we were trying to determine the difference between these two blue parts. I'm going to say recommend a selection. And I'm going to add colors just like we did before in that other tool. I'll even make this very broad in its selection. Say OK. And this one, that color. Say OK. So now it knows what we're looking for. And when it recommends colors, it'll be paying attention to what's different between those two things with different colors. Right now it's using eight numbers, or eight, eight colors, but we can change this number if we want. And also notice it's taking about 96.7 milliseconds, about approximately, to figure out, uh, or to do the math behind this inspection, to, to take all those pictures and to put the picture together. So if we tell it, I want fewer, notice that estimated capture time is going down. And again, it's paying attention to which colors highlight the differences between these two caps. And even down to three, we do a pretty good job. We start to get some of the text in the background or maybe that packet, we start to get a little bit of bleed over because we've taken away some spectral resolution. And when we get down to two, now we're really not doing a good job. So I would say for this application, we probably want at least four. That should be pretty robust. Actually, looking closer here, I can see a little bit of yellow on this green part. Maybe we want even five. How many does it take to get us away from that? You know, I think this is a case where I just set that sensitivity to too loose. I set it all the way to 20, could have left it at 10, and we wouldn't have seen this. Last time I did it, I set it at 10. <laughs> so pretend with me for a moment that three was the right one. Four. Ta-da! Okay, well that's really all I wanna go over right now. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it gives you ideas for your next project. And I hope it helps you walk through these tools. It's really pretty easy to use and uh, you can always give the guys at Keyence or Bring Machine a call to help you figure out your application. Thank you for amusing my American brother, John. He does so enjoy it when people watch his videos. Be a good chap. Share, like, subscribe, and comment. I'm sure he would be ecstatic to hear your impressions. Cheerio.